Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. I'm Jeanne Francine. Our next story takes us out to New York City. As we're being told, they are in the midst of a migrant crisis. This as asylum speakers are making their way to the Big Apple in record numbers. Joining us live to further explain is Fox 5 New York's Lisa Evers. Lisa, good morning. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning, Janae. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. So this term migrant crisis is ever developing. Uh, we know that there have been reports of crime increasing in that area from those asylum seekers. Break this down for us, Lisa. How did we get to this point? Well, I think one of the things, uh, Jeanne, is that in the beginning of the the migrants coming into New York City, there were a lot of families. There were a lot of uh, mothers and fathers either individually or together with small children. And now what's been happening in the, in the recent months in particular, according to the authorities, is there's been an influx of single men. And a lot of these men are, in, are young, they're between 18 and in their early 20s. Some of them are teenagers who are coming here with their mothers. And what we've seen, the video that you ju just saw was a migrant crime wave where there were at least 62 separate incidents, which you just saw some of them, where they're using the mopeds to try and take people's per women's purses off their shoulders, rob other people. This, this crime ring was being run by a migrant from Venezuela who police said was using WhatsApp to, these, uh, to the uh, uh, alleged suspects in this crime ring, telling them what they had to steal and what kind of shoplifting they had to do, what kind of uh, things they should be looking for, whether it's phones, whether it's purses, and that type of thing. So it was highly organized. And then we've seen other attacks. We've seen, you, you want to talk about the crime wave This just this past month, we've seen attacks on, multiple attacks on police officers when they have tried to get involved to try to break up a fight, when they have tried to uh, go after some of the shoplifting suspects um, in some of the stores, because one of the shelters that's been extremely problematic is, is located right near Times Square. So there's a lot of stores, you have a lot of tourists walking around carrying cash uh, with you know with valuables, with good watches, with expensive purses, expensive sneakers, that that type of thing. And then the other area that's been developing with crime is at the, one of the biggest shelters, which is on Randall's Island in the city. Um, it's a men's shelter, and where they try to uh, officers have been called in to try to break up fights, and then the they end up turning because there's so many of them, they end up turning on the police officers and attacking them. And so the NYPD has been extremely busy trying to uh, get them, trying to um, arrest them, to, to arrest them. And actually, some of these cases, with the case that with, that we were just you were just showing, with the robberies, the moped robberies, that mo robbery ring there of 62 documented incidents, which means there were probably more where people just didn't even bother to report them. So the police are doing their part; they're arresting them. The d district attorney, they're getting convening grand juries to try to get serious charges against these individuals. But it turns out that that's as far as they can go. They cannot remove them from the city because New York is considered a sanctuary city. Anyone who can come here can come here. For a long time, the police were not even using the term migrant because they were told they could not ask for somebody's immigration status. Um, which would be apparent, you know, it, it, to some degree, at least in name, they don't even have valid IDs. They don't even know who a lot of these people are. So that was one of the other factors, too, that there, were, there was just, they weren't in a database. There wasn't a driver's license. There wasn't a state ID. There was no way to track them down. So they made, the police have been making arrests in these cases as difficult as they have been. And, and one of the attacks on the police officer, it was a mother, Her it was her 15-year-old son who was doing the shoplifting um, in order to be part of this gang. So it's just, it's extremely um, organized. So police are doing it, but then it turns out that they cannot do what they would do in a lot of other cities, in most cities in America, which is, if you attack an undocumented individual who has no legal standing to be in the United States, they they could call ICE and they just basically hand the person over to ICE and then send them back to wherever they came from, whatever country they came from, and return them there. And then that's that's the responsibility of ICE. But here in New York City, they're not able to do that. And recently, the one of the administrators for ICE in the New York office said he finds out about migrants who've been convicted of crimes or accused of crimes from the media. That's his only official, he has no official channel with the NYPD, which to me is shocking because the NYPD 
as networks with the FBI, with all these other organizations, with many other police departments, law enforcement authorities because of gun trafficking, drug trafficking, uh, terrorism, all of these other things, Gene. So the fact that they just cannot pick up the phone or have a, a liaison with ICE and say, listen, we grabbed this guy in Times Square, he was robbing people, he was allegedly attacking police officers, he is being charged with robbery, can you please take, take him off our hands? They're not able to do that. So what happens, they, they go back in, they go back into the general population of the city and then go on to commit these crimes again or go to another state since they're already in the United States. So it's, it's very problematic for the officials. And then a lot of pressure, Gina, you, uh, we talked about these debit cards, I think the, the salt in the wound, because there, you have to understand too, there's a lot of destabilization going on in communities. There are these, these shelters, what they're calling shelters are really hotels where they're renting these rooms for up to 30 days uh, for, for these, uh, you know, for the migrants. Mm -hmm. And in some, in, in the borough of Queens, there's, you couldn't get a hotel room if you were traveling in from Kennedy Airport because they're being used for these migrant shelters, but they don't eat there, they eat other places. There's all sorts of ancillary type of disruptions to the daily life and business of New Yorkers that is really wearing on them. But when the, the mayor said he's doing a $53 million pilot program to give migrants $13 a day prepaid debit cards that was really the final straw to people because they were just like, why are they getting debit cards? We have New Yorkers going to food banks, you know, to try to make their food uh, supply last until the end of the month. And they can't get a debit card. They can't get a, assistance like that, that they can spend on basically whatever they want. They're saying, well, it's only going to go for food, baby items, that type of thing. But there's no way of tracking it at all. So, Janae, a lot of anger building up on the part of, of many people across the board from all different walks of life. And I have to tell you, from all different, uh, all different backgrounds, people are just like, why is this going on? We were already facing a homeless crisis here in New York City. And then to have, the, we have the same number of people, over 60,000 undocumented immigrants coming into New York City um, as we do homeless people in the shelters. And there's probably more than that because nobody's keeping track. It's basically like the government, the federal government said, well, you know, the southern border, we're just going to leave the door wide open. You would never do that with your house because it would be <laughs> who knows who would come in and what they would do. But that's that's what's happening. And, and New York is one of the cities that's paying a very, very high price for that, Janae. Lisa, I'm so glad you mentioned all of those points because it seems like this crisis has become convoluted because of the crime. Initially, you were we were highlighting the asylum seekers coming to the area for better wages, better quality of life, um, running away from um, crime in their own backyard where they're traveling from. But now the crime happening in the city, they're escaping too. I want to ask you, though, uh, part of what you mentioned about those debit cards. I know this past week, uh, Mayor Adams was discussing budget cuts. And he was under fire because, you know, all of that funding being given to the migrants, people were saying, well, just cut that funding instead of cutting uh, city pay and other things like that. How are you seeing that play out? Because as you mentioned, several people within New York City who were born there, raised there, they're facing their own crisis of not being able to afford a uh, quality of living. Well, there's all there, there's other and, and again, there's, you know, Janae, you bring up a great point because there's so many of these ancillary uh, consequences and unintended consequences that have come into people. You know, library hours shortened and libra libraries in a, in a city, especially like New York, where people are in a lot of cramped living places that kids don't have, like a lot of kids don't have their own private bedroom um, as they would in a private house to do their homework or to study or to read or to do or to do whatever you know they have to do but the um th there's just a lot people see a lot of these cuts and then there the, then the fact that that millions of dollars is going for migrants has people very very upset and i think at first people were like okay sure you know new york we can help a lot of people thought okay well we can help them out they're they're asylum seekers people are thinking they filled out paperwork initially they filled out paperwork when they crossed the border that is so not true and what's what's happened is what typically happens is that you, you're you're bringing in people you don't know who they are you don't know what their background is you're allowing them to come into your city you're giving them free hotel rooms 
And in the mayor's own words, you're giving them a full package of benefits. They just recently imposed this limit on the, the shelter stay of 30 days, but a lot of them feel like, well, I can come in, I can get a phone, I can get, now I can get a, deal, a cash card every single day. What incentive do they have to leave and to try to go anyplace else? And they try to put people, they have put some people on buses to leave the city, but there's no other city that's really giving them the kind of uh, package of benefits that they're able to get in New York City. So, of course, a criminal element is going to take care of that, is going to take advantage of that, which is exactly what we're seeing play out. And I think one thing, people who mean well, you know, a lot of there's a lot of policies that we see at all levels of government. People mean well, they create a program, but they're not understanding the criminal mentality, which law enforcement ex experts who are honest will tell you they are they are wired differently differently from the law-abiding citizen and that they will take advantage of whatever is there. If they can get into the United States, there's a lot more shoplifting to do here. There's a lot a lot more uh, a lot more benefits that they can tap into. And with every single benefit that they get, the average New Yorker who is struggling, whether to pay their bills, whether to put food on the table for their family, whether because they're, they're on the subway and they have to watch themselves even more carefully because of this, it's, it's just getting to people. And people, you know, there's a lot of people that are fed up. There's a lot of people that continue to plan to move, actually have moved, are trying to move if they can. And uh, it, it's just, it's a terrible situation, Jeanne. Lisa Evers with Fox 5 New York. We always appreciate your expertise and detailed reporting. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on Live Now from Fox to break down this migrant crisis in relation to asylum seekers. You enjoy the rest of your day, Lisa. Thank you.